Hey guys, welcome back. The Sentinels are one of Halo's more enigmatic beings. Most, if not all, variants of the Sentinel were built with only one purpose in mind, destroying the Flood, hence why they only ever tend to show up during or just before an outbreak. Today, we are covering the lore of all of the variants of these mysterious pre-programmed quarantine drones, including a few that I think some people may not know exist. Okay, so let's start off with the most common type of Sentinel, the type that anybody who has ever touched a Halo game knows about, the Aggressors. Originally acting as guards during the construction of the Halo Array, the Aggressors were later reassigned to be the primary defense force of the Halos and other foreigner installations against any foreign intruders, but primarily against the Flood. Like many other Sentinel variants, the Aggressors are created in airborne manufacturing facilities that are able to be relocated to areas of high parasite concentration, allowing for the most efficient execution of containment protocols. The Aggressors come outfitted with a Sentinel Beam, believe it or not, hot enough to melt directly through Flood biomass and also to destroy a corpse, denying the Flood a potential host through reanimation. They also have a protective energy shield which makes them slightly more durable in battle. The gold version of the Aggressor Sentinel, a variant that for some reason for like a decade I always thought was called the Sentinel Captain, not exactly sure why, apparently it's not, but anyways, this Captain variant is simply an across-the-board improvement on the Silver Aggressor. It has a blue Sentinel Beam, which is likely hotter than the regular gold one, and a slightly stronger energy shield. Once created, the Aggressors fall under the order of the installation's monitor, and despite having their own incredibly basic AI functions, likely operate largely under their orders. When they aren't engaged in battle, the Aggressors are capable of aiding in the maintenance of foreign facilities, and also can act as security drones, guarding locations where flood samples are stored. In combat, the Aggressors can be used in large numbers to swarm bigger threats, or can use their own AI functions to counter smaller threats in smaller numbers. Both variants of the Aggressor also have their own self-destruct system, useful for smaller scale threats, so when they're destroyed, they explode and release an electromagnetic pulse, damaging anything in a close vicinity and knocking any nearby electronics offline. However, if a flood outbreak has reached the coordinator stage, and thus has the added intelligence and strategy provided by a grave mind, these basic AI functions become far less effective, and backup is needed. This backup can come in the form of the Enforcer Sentinel. Now, the only time that we've ever seen the Enforcer in action is during Halo 2, when the Flood outbreak had been growing and evolving for over a hundred thousand years. So that right there should give you a little bit of a hint as to the strength of the Enforcer. Where the Aggressor Sentinel are a Halo's answer to a small-scale, simple outbreak, the Enforcers are a Halo's answer to a large-scale, intelligent outbreak. And because of this, they come equipped with far more heavy-duty weaponry and defences than their smaller cousins. For offence, they have three primary methods of attack. For combating infantry, they have a pulse beam that fires a continuous stream of these individual red needle-type things, presumably able to shred directly through biomass. For vehicles, crowd control, and also heavy infantry units like the Flood Juggernaut, it also has an inbuilt mortar that fires a constant bombardment of explosives, and if anything tries to hide beneath it, well then it has two massive mechanical arms that allow it to pick up and crush any vehicle it feels like, from warthogs to reefs. For defense, it has a large energy shield that covers its face, for lack of a better word. This shield shares almost identical properties to the Jackal Shield, being almost immune to ballistic weaponry, but extremely weak to plasma. The body of the Enforcer is made out of some sort of reinforced metal that's likely used to make many of the foreigner structures. Therefore, even if its shield is disabled, it is still a tough son of a bitch, able to tank multiple scorpion shots before being taken out. Because of their enhanced offensive and defensive capabilities, the Enforcers have only ever been seen when a flood outbreak reaches the coordinator stage, which makes them far more intelligent and strategic thanks to the Gravemind commanding them. During the War on the Ark in 2558, a possible new variant of the Enforcer was encountered called the Controller Sentinel. Now, it's not known for sure if this is a variant, but it works incredibly similarly to the Enforcer, so I'm going to assume that it is. They were used long ago during the construction of the Lesser Ark, and were later awoken by the Banished and the Spirit of Fire on the Ark. 
These things have a different sort of energy beam that has to charge up before firing a beam that has a much larger area of effect. Their protective energy shield is also a lot stronger than usual, practically invincible in fact, making the only way to destroy them attacking them from behind while they're distracted from the front. The Super Sentinel is another form of Heavy Duty Sentinel, as you'd imagine by the name. The only time these things have ever been encountered though is on the Shield World 0459 during Halo Wars 1, so it's possible that maybe they only exist within that Shield World, or maybe the Foreigners were testing out this prototype Sentinel to be used against the Flood during the war, but it never saw widespread use for whatever reason. These Sentinels were released as part of the Shield World Stage 3 Defense Protocols, to repel the Covenant, the US NSC, and of course, the Flood. Whereas the Enforcer fits a more offensive role overall, the Super Sentinel fits a more defensive role, with its only method of attack being an NG beam that immobilizes and temporarily disarms its target, only doing minimal damage. It's likely that this is meant to be paired with an Enforcer, or with a swarm of aggressors or something, because on its own, this isn't really going to do much. Another form of Sentinel that fits a more supportive role, but in a much different sense, is the Constructor. Now, the Constructor is essentially a Sentinel Engineer. It's a small, nimble little thing that darts around foreign installations, repairing anything damaged by the Flood. In the past, they've been crucial in aiding contained Flood outbreaks by ensuring that any facility that helps counter the outbreak is in working condition. Being the weakest Sentinel overall, they're most definitely not fit for combat, but their low-power NG beam can still do some damage, so I guess it's not totally defenseless. However, if one's attacked, then it can quickly summon a horde of aggressors to come and defend it. Another likely much larger sentinel that's very similar to the Constructor is the Assembler. Now, we've never actually seen the Assembler, we've only heard about their existence. These Assemblers help build foreign installations using the resources gathered by Retrievers, and aren't exactly designed for combat purposes. However though, despite this, they've been known to entirely drop their construction protocols in the event of a Flood outbreak and engage in combat duties containing the Flood with other Sentinels. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the Retriever Sentinel, which is without a doubt one of the strongest Sentinels. The Retriever is primarily used for construction purposes, so when a new Halo installation is being created, the Retriever gathers resources from the Foundry planet in the centre of the Ark to be used to create the Halo, and then the Assembler then uses those resources to create the installation. And the same thing happens for repairs as well. This thing is almost 500 metres in length, so it's a behemoth of a sentinel to say the least, and it can carry a huge amount of resources below itself using an artificial gravity force. In 2555, a retriever sentinel appeared through the Voy Arc portal and begun to harvest the entire city of Voy to be used to repair damages caused to the Ark by Chief detonating Insulation 08 at the end of Halo 3. That's how big these things are, they can suck up an entire city, so let's just say that in Halo Wars 2 they had to shrink them down quite a lot to make them fit into the game. A Retriever Sentinel is also capable of merging with another Retriever, creating some sort of Mega Retriever with the speed and strength of both combined. However, the Retrievers aren't just used for construction. During the Flood War, the Foreigners also employed Retrievers as escort for key ships and also larger combat Sentinels. Not only did they help build the Ark, but they also protected the Dreadnoughts that contained the samples of species from the Flood, helping ensure that life in the galaxy would still continue after the Foreigners fired the Halos to wipe out the Flood. In the years following this restart of the galaxy, prehistoric humans witnessed Retrievers constructing the Ark Portal at what would later become Voy. Because these massive mechanical entities were entirely alien to these tribes, they saw them as gods, constructing some sort of mechanism that was beyond their comprehension. When threatened, the Retrievers are programmed to also defend themselves and also their installations, although their skill in battle is pretty outmatched by other more offensive type sentinels, so this is likely only ever seen as a last resort. This happened when Voridus, the banished lieutenant, got too close to the quarantined high charity on the Ark. Retrievers were sent into battle as a last resort to stop the Brute from breaking the quarantine shield. But as we know, they weren't exactly successful. Let's just say that a banished Scarab can pretty much overpower anything that it wants to. 
And finally, there's one more type of sentinel that I want to briefly cover. And when I say briefly, I mean briefly, because this thing has only ever been seen once. And that's this big boy. It was shown once very briefly in Origins Part 1, the sort of animated retelling of the Foreigner Flood War that was in Halo Legends. And it seems to be some sort of massive offensive sentinel sporting this huge particle cannon that can be used for combating large flood masses. Its beam is so powerful that not only does it have to be charged before firing, but it can also be seen from space along with the gigantic explosion that it causes. I have no idea what this thing is actually called or what it even is, but one thing I know for sure is that its design is cool as fuck and I can hope ever so slightly that maybe someday in the future we're gonna see this thing again, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. So that's it, every single variant of Sentinel ever created to either contain or help contain a flood outbreak. Next time you're on a foreigner installation and there happens to be a flood outbreak, you can judge the severity of the outbreak and also the level of how fucked you really are by which sentinels you encounter. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you also to everybody supporting me over on Patreon. The support over there recently has been so real, like mind-blowingly real, so thank you guys so much. Tomahawk, Momo, Shikata, Mjolnir, Matthew, Pierre, Tony, Theo, Michael, Resnek, Fish, Joshua, Mecca, Jack Madden, Eric Brown, Sam Grafton, Bruin98, Hayden Woods, Matthew Brown, Gareth Davies, Renegade Ginger, Fwimmy Goat, Sergeant Swords, Zach Youngwood, and Eric Hagler. Thank you guys so much, I really, really appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.